welcome to day five of Stage 2 Productions, 12 Days Before Christmas. We don't have a story for you this evening. Instead, what we've got is a few conversations about how some of us keep Christmas uh, and celebrate Christmas, as well as a little bit of uh, discussion about how other cultures might celebrate various other holidays around this time of year. So, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and enjoy. about celebrating community and kind of what the holidays mean for different people and how different traditions relate. So if you look behind me, <laughs> um, there's a house right there. I'm having to do this in the mirror. It's weird. That's my mother's house. She and my stepfather live across the street from me. Um, in the year of COVID, we've not seen each other much um, because they have health concerns and are elderly. And um, we even there, we've kind of minimized because my husband and my son work in areas that are high risk. So even there, we've had minimal contact. But I'm going to try to show you this, and hopefully the camera will cooperate with me. Um, yeah, ignore my messy living room. So we have this beautiful little village here. Now, if you notice... It is an alpine scene with the little color wheel in it and it moves. And I absolutely adore, uh, if we can get a, a nice close up, we have little carolers here. We have just this lovely little scene. So this thing, one of the reasons it's important to me, it is one of the few very regular Christmas traditions that I do put up. That is an absolute. Every, everything else is kind of flexible. That is an absolute. My mother has the same thing. And my aunt, who got these for us, also has one. Um, if you know me, you've heard me talk about I grew up in Germany. My aunt, when she was living in Florida, <laughs> who, who is also German, by the way, had found these and had purchased one for herself because she took such delight in it because it reminded her of home which for all of us is Germany. Um, and she then purchased one for my mother. And then when I expressed delight over it, also sent one to me. So we all three would have this piece of connection. It's minor things, people. It's not the big gifts, right? It's not the, uh, the big to do. It's sometimes those little bitty things that connect us the deepest and sometimes it's just the conversation. So I think that is the most beautiful thing that I've kind of learned about all of these different holiday traditions and where they live. Then when it comes right down to it, it's about celebrating connections. And that's something we should all enjoy together. Walter Day Lamar. And the robin flew into the air, the air, the white mist threw, and small and rare the night frost fell in the calm and misty dell. And the dust gathered low, and the silver moon and stars on the frozen snow drew taper bars, kindled winking fires in the hooded briars. 
And the sprawling bear growled deep in the sky, and Orion's hair streamed sparkling by, but the north side low, snow, snow, more snow. <laughs> As many of us head towards our Christmas celebrations, many others have other celebrations around this time of year. The beautiful thing about all these celebrations to me is that they all touch on the ideals of light and togetherness, community, and the idea of being more open-hearted and a better person. So while we are not celebrants of these beautiful traditions, we'd like to share with you just a tiny glimpse of what else is out there. Um, we're gonna start with Diwali. Um, Diwali is celebrated mid-October to mid-November. Um, it travels by the Hindu calendar, so it flexes on ours, very steady on theirs. Um, this is a five-day festival of light. It's a celebration of light triumphing over darkness, and it's celebrated in Hindu, Sikh, and Jain faiths. Then uh, we have Bodhi Day. This uh, Buddhist holiday falls on the eighth day of the 12th lunar month of the Chinese calendar, and it celebrates the enlightenment of the Buddha. It represents the day he chose to begin a long period of fasting by sitting under the Bodhi tree. Um, one that we're a little bit more familiar with, Hanukkah. This celebration harkens back to the rededication of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem after an unlikely win by a small revolutionary band of Maccabees driving out an occupying force of Greeks. Um, the key component on this holiday is the menorah, and the candles on the menorah represent the miracle of a day's worth of oil lasting for an entire eight days. Um, Yule and the winter solstice, uh, these winter traditions span many religions uh, and cultures and can be found around the globe. They often focus on community uh, and light. They're, they're celebrated on the shortest day of the year to greet the return of the longer days and a renewal of the earth. And we have Kwanzaa. And this holiday lasts from December 26th until January 1st. And it celebrates family, community, and culture. And it's celebrated by African Americans and in some African communities. This holiday finds its origins in Swahili philosophy. And in this holiday it brings together celebrants closer with the core seven principles and serves as a time for reflection and recommitment to community, family, and culture. So those are just a few of the other holidays we find around the world. They're celebrated kind of in that November and December span. More than anything, we encourage you to be open-minded, open-hearted, um, learn a little bit about what's out there. Again, you know, we don't celebrate these, we don't have the deep insights, but there are beautiful traditions everywhere in the world, and we're all better people when we kind of open our hearts to those. Happy New Year from Stage 2.
So my Christmas traditions. Um, well, I come from a family that has various uh, religious beliefs. I wasn't raised in the church myself, but I did learn the Bible and the Christian faith. As I grew older, I explored other religions and, and belief systems, Buddhism, ancient Celtic traditions, Yule, uh, Wicca. And I was always fascinated by the idea that the Christmas and, and other Christmas traditions we follow today, uh, Christian traditions we follow today, have their origins in older European traditions. Um, but in the end, I, I guess I consider myself a secular agnostic. But that really fits in with, with my and my family's Christmas traditions and, and how I view the holidays. Um, I treat Christmas as a very secular holiday with a religious origin. It's a time of giving, a time of reflection, a time to be with the people that you love, um, rebirth, renewal. Uh, a time to put aside our differences and, and, and come to, together to celebrate being human. My family's Christmas traditions were all pretty standard. We'd put up a tree um, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, we'd decorate inside and out. Lights, mistletoe, wreaths, holly. Back when I was really little, we lived in, uh, we lived in town in Evansville. We had these plywood cutouts that my dad had cut out and my mom had painted. Um, Santa in a sleigh, um, eight reindeer, Rudolph's nose was always a, a single red Christmas light at the end of the string. The rest of the lights were white and were draped along to be the bells on the harnesses. Um, Christmas Eve, every once in a while we would go caroling. Um, we would uh, go Christmas Eve to visit my grandparents. Then we'd come back home. Um, we'd have a big dinner together, the whole family, cousin, aunts, uncles, uh, all gathered at my mom and dad's house. We, we'd go to bed early waiting for Santa and uh, he would come and leave us piles and piles of gifts. We'd wake up at 3 a.m. Santa would come to the stairs and, and shout, ho, 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 and all the kids run down to, to find their presents. Um, then we'd open, open presents from each other, um, all the standard Christmas, holiday traditions. Like I said, it, it, it always fascinated me about the origins of, of Christmas traditions and, and how we think of our traditions um, and how many of them didn't really start with Christianity. The, there are thousands of examples, but the easiest one to talk about would probably be Yule. Uh, that's the North Norse celebration of the winter solstice. It's a celebration of the shortest day of the year. It's the turnaround point. Um, after that day, the light would start to grow stronger again and the days would get longer. Um, it's, it signifies coming out of the darkness. Um, it was traditionally considered a day that um, the God of light was reborn in the Norse and the Druidic and Celtic uh, traditions. For Yule, people would decorate pine trees with shiny decorations, uh, candles, garland, and pretty much everything we do today. Um, the tradition of the Yule log and the 12 days of Christmas actually uh, predate Christmas and, uh, and Christianity, um, they've been, even though they're practiced as Christian tradition today. Um, the Norsemen would cut down a huge tree and then they would take it into the hearth and put one end in the hearth, and for 12 days, as it burned to ash, they would scoot the log into the hearth further. Um, every day they would give gifts to their loved ones. Uh, they would, uh, you know, as the, as the log burned. Um, at the end of the 12 days, when it was finally completely consumed, uh, they, they would have a big bonfire with the last remaining piece of the Yule log. And then people would take the ashes and spread them on the fields uh, to bless the, the coming planting season, which acted as, you know, fertilizer. And so uh, fertilized the fields. They would also take the, the Yule ash and put it in little urns or, or pouches that they would carry with them throughout the year. Um, there was always a, a Santa-like figure who brought gifts to children and, uh, you know, to, to the good children. And there was, there was another figure for uh, w when the children were uh, misbehaving throughout the year and, and needed punishment <laughs> at Christmas. Um, it was, at its heart, it was a very pragmatic 
and secular holiday for, for the Norse people. Um, even though it had all of the trappings of, of a, a religious celebration. Um, and that's kind of how I view Christmas. Uh, to me, it's, it's not about faith, religion, although I know that's very important to many people, uh, vital to some people. But to me, Christmas is about bringing people together. Dating back to the Stone Age, this time of year has always been about rebirth, renewal, uh, a celebration of life. It's always been about coming together as, as a people to spread goodwill, regardless of your faith or what religion you follow, or even whether you follow any religion at all. It's, it's a time of, of togetherness and, and giving. So with that, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and above all, be good to one another. Little Tree by E.E. E. Cummings Little tree, little silent Christmas tree, you are so little, you are more like a flower. Who found you in the green forest, and were you very sorry to come away? See, I will comfort you because you smell so sweetly. I will kiss your cool bark and hug you safe and tight, just as your mother would, only don't be afraid. Look, the spangles that sleep all the year in a dark box, dreaming of being taken out and allowed to shine, the balls, the chains red and gold, the fluffy threads. Put up your little arms, and I'll give them all to you to hold. Every finger shall have its ring, and there won't be a single place dark or unhappy. And when you're quite dressed, you'll stand in the window for everyone to see, and how they'll stare. Oh, but you'll be very proud. And my little sister and I will take hands, and looking up at our beautiful tree, we'll dance and sing Noel, Noel. Sisters, sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no sir. I'm here to keep my eye on her. Caring, sharing, every little thing that we are wearing. When a certain gentleman arrived from Rome, she wore the dress and I stay home. All kinds of weather, we stick together the same in the rain or sun. Two different faces, but in tight places, we think and we act as one. Those who've seen us know that not a thing could come between us. Many men have tried to split us up, but no one can. Lord, help the mister who comes between me and my sister. The sister who comes between me and my man. All kinds of weather we stick together, the same in the rain or sun. Two different faces, but in tight places, we think and we act as one. Uh -huh. Those who see us know that not a thing can come between us. Many men have tried to split us up, but no one can. Lord, help the mister who comes between me and my sister. And Lord, help the sister who comes between me and my man. Sisters? Sisters? Sister, don't come between me and my man.